at least let a few people come in. What's going on? How y'all doing today? Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. What's up, y'all? Come on in. Just want a few people to come on in here. Good morning. Just gotta get this gotta get this off my chest. It's all down in me, so I gotta do it right now, y'all. So few people people can watch it later whatever but y'all can share this all right y'all good morning good morning good morning good morning <clears throat> so I want to share with you guys uh um and again, people, it's not a lot of people on right now. I know it's fairly early, but uh but I just want to get this out there. Um I'm not okay. I'm not okay. And the reason that I'm not okay is because is because we are not okay. What do I mean by we are not okay? Um you know, I I can speak I'm going to speak mostly to to the city of Chicago. The city of Chicago like it, it's it's in an uproar right now. It's in an uproar. You know, we we are afraid to, well, you know, some of us, not not all of us, you know what I'm saying? I mean, us men, you know, some women. I mean, we have to live life. We can't we can't walk around we can't walk around being afraid, you know, to go out and, you know, and to live life, but you know, people are, people are, people are afraid, and that's the reality of it, and, you know, we, we talk about these, we have these asylum seekers, do I feel, am I okay with, am I okay with, with us supporting and making sure another human being is okay? Absolutely. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Should we help the asylum seekers? Absolutely. Let's help the asylum seekers. But we have to take care of home first. We have to take care of home first. And I don't believe that we are properly taking care of home first. You know, I'm always careful that you know, I don't want anybody to, you know, judge me and say that I said or I did anything wrong. You know, I'm always careful to make sure can't nobody say anything negative about me. But I've learned that, you know, you damned if you do and you damned if you don't pretty much. You know, people are going to say negative stuff about you, whether you're the most positive person in the world. So I can't care about that. Um, but I just really want to deal with the facts here, right? So, born and raised in church, I've been in church all my life. Grandmother was a pastor. Mom's a minister. My dad is a pastor. My entire life, I have a relationship with God. I love God. <laughs> um, always will. Y'all think that it's important to have relationship. But also, you know, we, we pray. We march. I pray every day. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We march, we pray some more, we hold hands, we touch and agree, but faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. When we get done praying and when we get done marching, not to speak negative against that, but what is the outcome? Where are we after that? Where's the work? Where's the work that needs to be put in place in order for that to happen? So where I'm going with this is, is that I have never in my life, never in my life 
have I wanted to give up so bad? I've been in business now for 30 years. I am 50 years old. I've been in business for 30 years. And I've literally been working, like work working, not play working, work working. Since I was 12 years old, I've been working. And if we want to get get a little deeper than that, playing drums at church, they used to pay me $5. So as a even younger than 12 years old, I was working getting a paycheck to play drums at church, $5. And they used to take my tithes out, 10%. But nevertheless, I have never wanted to give up so bad. I'm in a position right now that if I wanted to, I could just say, man, screw all this. Let me, let me, let me sell all my businesses. Let me quit. Let me stop while I'm ahead. Let me make sure all my employees are okay. Let me make sure I'm good. And I can bounce. I feel like that sometimes. I do feel like that sometimes because it's so difficult and it's so hard. Us working together as a people. Us working together as a people. Keeping good credit, yeah, that's great. But in a lot of cases, and unfortunately, let's 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 call it what it is. With us, we can't go to the banking and properly get loans. So years ago, what did that force me have to to have to do? Trying to get deals done, got to go to hard money lenders. I have paid hard money lenders back in my lifetime over four hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to say that again. I have paid hard money lenders back in my lifetime over $400,000 with 50 and 60% interest rates that my bank, that I put millions of dollars through, that my bank could have gave me loans for. They could have gave me loans at reasonable interest rates, but they didn't do it. You're talking about with good credit, with a great business, great business models, and they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. So we are helping the outside people right now to date. I have did things that people will consider the impossible. I went to the bank and told the bank, hey, I want to do housing for my students. No, we, we, we're not supporting no housing. We're, we're not doing that. So what did I do? I went on my own and I did housing, the first housing ever for barber schools. I did housing on my own. And when the bank seen the numbers, they were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What, what, did, what did you do? What did you do? I said, I tried to tell y'all. But I took a risk and I did it anyway to show you because it was, it, it, it was what was needed. If you deal with homelessness and we have to deal with gift and character, you know, Back when I've, I've always been a hard worker, and I learned it from my dad. I watched my dad. I've always been a hard worker. And the fact of the matter is, is that, let, let's call it what it is. This new generation especially, I know I was bad, but it's like we want things right away. We want things, we are the microwave, microwave day age. We want things right away, meaning that it's like I'm from the old school. If I have some pizza from last night, Versus putting it in a microwave where the bread is going to get soggy and the cheese is going to melt all on a, on a plastic plate or on a plate or whatever. You know, that two or three minutes is not worth the taste that you're going to get from that pizza versus preheating the oven, putting a pizza in the oven. You, it might take longer, but it's going to taste closer than it did when you first got the pizza. Y'all follow me? So the point that I'm making is, is that, you know, we've created this day and age where where people have a, it's like they feel warranted. I need it right now. I need it right away. I didn't understand why I had to go through all of the things that I had to go through. But I had to go through them in order to be able to be the man that I am today. I have anything and everything that I could have ever possibly wanted in my life. If anybody know me, I've always driven a nice car, always, because I worked hard to have a nice car. So I've always driven a nice car. I've been able to always get whatever kind of car I wanted because I worked hard in order to get it. Now, was I able to afford it in some cases? No, because I wasn't mature enough to understand the dynamics of 
the dynamics of, okay, you purchase this type of car for this amount of money if you make this caliber of money, and, and you have there's a certain, you know, a, a, a certain demographic, if you will, that you have to be in. I didn't understand it. I just thought because I made $100,000, that meant that I can go and buy a $100,000 car. That's not the way it works. So one of the biggest issues that we have is is that, so in Chicago, let's say with the asylum seekers, right? Okay, you, so so for me, begging, I'm, right now I'm building a community center from the ground. Right now I'm expanding one of my businesses, so I'm building onto it almost another 10,000 square feet from the ground. I'm building 100 unit student housing. I'm building that from the ground. I'm opening up a uh, uh, a brand new trade school with automotive, diesel, aviation, welding, HVAC, appliance repair. I bought all of these properties and I bought them cash. And I've been able to do that through the structure and the discipline of what I had to go through in order to set myself up so that way I wouldn't that way I wouldn't keep having excuses as to why things aren't working well for me or why things aren't going right for me. Right? We want to blame everything and we want to blame everybody else. But we have to take accountability for ourselves. So I position myself where I wouldn't have no personal debt. I position myself where I would I wouldn't be able to take I want to be able to take care of my businesses and my employees and my family without my personal needs and wants being in the way, right? So where I'm going with this is is that city of Chicago, people of Chicago, we're afraid to go downtown. We're afraid to, to, to go outside in our communities. We have to go to the gas station and, and hold our hand on our guns while we're at the gas station pumping gas. I'm from the day where you used to be able to go in the store, go in the whole store for 10, 15, 20 minutes with your car running if you wanted to, or go in the house with your car running, and it's okay. But who's getting down to the bottom of why are these youth, and not only youth, it's some, a lot of adults too, but why are they acting and performing like they're performing? Why are they going downtown and going to different neighborhoods and terrorizing people? Why are they carjacking? Why are they robbing? Why are they stealing? A lot of you guys don't know this. A lot of y'all don't know this, but I've been in Cook County Jail now since 2009 to 2010. So that's close to 14 years. I've had, I've had the first, I made history by putting the first barber school inside of a county jail. And I'm in four penal institutions now. And I'm in three Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice locations. But I've been in the Cook County Jail now for almost 14 years. A lot of people think I get paid to be there. It costs $17,290 per student to go to my barber school. And by the way, I'm the cheapest barber school who has who offers financial aid, just so you guys know. But almost 14 years, I do it complimentary. I don't get paid to be there. I don't get paid to be there. A lot of y'all don't know that. So who funds it and who underwrites it? My non-for-profit funds and underwrites that. Who works in there? I work in there. I'm in there tirelessly from the morning to the to the next shift, walking out of there extremely as I do. I go to court and stand before the judges with some of these guys in court who are my students, and the judge will literally stop court for me. Hey, how can we help you? How can we help you help them? I have people working for me who are taxpaying citizens who are working for me inside of my Walmart locations, which is, by the way, the biggest box store. We always want to use an excuse as to, oh, Walmart, you leaving the community. Why, you know, and we're tearing up our communities and this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? We don't own, we don't own a lot of the, what do we own, what businesses do we own in the communities? The businesses we own in the communities, barbershops, beauty shops, a few sprinkles of restaurants here and there, a couple of clothing stores here and there, and churches and funeral homes. What else do we own in the communities? The reality of it is we don't own gas stations. 
We don't own big stores. We don't own the high rises and the, the skyscrapers downtown. We don't own none of this. So we have people in positions who don't understand. Don't send the police to our communities who don't understand our people, who don't understand our community. I've went outside of my businesses and stopped people from going to get their guns to come shoot somebody. I've done it. I've ran outside of my businesses in the hood to stop people from beating up and from fighting other people or jump, getting jumped. I've done that. I've employed the little guys in the neighborhoods who, 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 who wanted to sweep up some trash and, 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 or empty the garbage or just wanted to clean up or do something different, you know, and they might have been drunks or, or, you know, alcoholics or drug addicts and stuff like that, but I used the opportunity not to take advantage of them, but I used the opportunity to sow some positive energy into them. How can I help you guys? What, did it, what is it can I do? In order to help make a difference in your life, how can I help you not to be an alcoholic and be reasonable in with you being an adult? So th there's no way that a person like me should be. I don't have the. I need. I need your help. I need you guys' help. I'm asking for donations, not for myself. I'm asking for donations so that way I can be in a better position to help our people. I bought shuttle buses and vans years ago. I started housing, man, on my own. When the bank said, no, nah, man, we're not giving you no money for no housing. I went into Cook County Jail to say, hey, how can I help? I came up with, a, with, with, with my hands up like, I surrender. How can I help? How can I serve? Because we got to get down to the bottom of it. So, again, marching, praying, all of these things are great. But guess what I'm doing? You can come to barber school. We have financial aid available for those who qualify. We have scholarships available for those who qualify. I'm opening up a, a beauty, a cosmetology school, a nail school, a aesthetic school. I have a trade school I'm opening up in order to give them a trade. So what are we going to do with these asylum seekers? It's like they're trying to make robots replace everything. They're trying to make robots replace everything, robots and computers, you know, but the thing that can't replace ro ro the things that robots and computers can't replace is a barber, a stylist, a, a, a mechanic, um, and uh, HVAC repair, uh, appliance repair, uh, welding. Robots and computers can't replace these things, right? So why not help? There are so many multimillionaires out there. If you're not even a millionaire. I would love, there's somebody on this live listening right now, somebody you can share this with or whatever the case may be. I've done the work. I want to give up so bad, y'all. Y'all don't understand. Why do I want to give up? Because I feel like, I feel like there aren't enough of us coming together. It takes a team. There's a team effort. If you can't do it, then help the person who can do it. Why would the state, I, I got the state slow to pay. The state don't pay like they supposed to, but they want your business to stay open and be thriving. But the state don't pay like they supposed to. They don't do what they supposed to do. The city, come on, let's call it what it is. The city don't always do what they supposed to do either. But they expect for us to be strong. They expect for us to survive. They want to stop the violence. They want to stop the crime, but how can we stop it when you don't give the people who have some answers the resources in order to stop it? I can only do so much by myself. Between all my social media, I probably got about 20, 30, 40,000 followers in, in all my social media, right? So guess what? You might be a pastor. You might be a, a bus driver. You might be a... Uh, a computer science person, you might be a doctor, whatever the case may be, but you aren't what I am and what I serve and what I'm able to do. So if you can, help me. I'm not on here begging. I'm not on here pleading. I'm on here because I'm hurting over the fact that there are too many of us that can help with the issues and with the problems that are going on in our city of Chicago. So let's talk about the asylum seekers. Asylum seekers. After after we spend what they say, fifty one million dollars that we spent for the asylum seeker, 
after we spend this money for the asylum seekers, right, and we house them, let's just say we are able to house them, which will be temporary, that's a temporary fix. It's a temporary fix. Why not partner with someone like Larry Roberts? Larry Roberts. I have Data Foundation, Data Scholarships Foundation. I have LBC Properties, LSC Enterprises, Larry's Barber College. I have Astro Kicks and Goods. I have Shoe and Clothing Brand. I have products. I have all of these things, right, that's available so that way, okay, we, we're bringing people in, we're taking people out of jail, but are we giving them a way that they can sustain themselves by themselves? That's right. We can't put a Band-Aid on this situation. We have to give them a way. We have to teach them how to fish and let them be able to be on their own. The issue with these youth is not the fact that they wanna, they, they're want they going to end up unalived or they're going to end up in jail. It's two things, unalived or in jail, and they know that. So don't think that they'll walk around and say, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to carjack somebody today because I want to go to jail. If they didn't want to go to jail, they wouldn't run, right? If, if they didn't know if they didn't know that, hey, I, there's a possibility that I can lose my life today, they're not saying, let, let me go out and lose my life today. They're not saying that. But they need mentoring. They need life skills. They need, there's, there's mental, there's a mental capacity that's there that's unbelievable. Substance abuse. All of these things they need before we put them in these positions of jobs and work. They don't want to work at the, the places where they get three, four hundred dollars every two weeks or five hundred dollars or six, seven hundred dollars every two weeks. They can't, they can't, nobody can survive off that. A one bedroom apartment nowadays is what seven, eight, nine, a thousand dollars a month. Then we talk about utilities, we talk about gas, car payments, all of these things. We talk about. So it's like help the people who can help. These people, I shouldn't be the only one thinking about the people that's living upside the expressway uh, in in the University of Chicago campus right off Roosevelt, it's like how many multimillionaires and how many people in position to help drive down this expressway every every day? Every day. I should be in position where I can say, hey, let me send my team out there. Let me round all them up. Okay, how can we help you? Let's clean you up. Let's find you somewhere to live. Let's get you some help because you know that there has to be a drug problem. There has to be some, some mental incapacities there. And there has to be the fact that they need they need somebody to pour into them, right? So at the end of the day, we have to prepare them for the trades. People like we're using our hands nowadays. That's what's happening. That's what's going on with us, right? So, you know, guys, if y'all can help me, help me. Y'all can donate. I have a 501c3 that I proactively put in place a long time ago. City of Chicago, man. Partner with me. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got it. My new trade school is opening up Tuesday, June 6th. Let's do it. Come and roll. You go you you go past all the car dealerships, mechanic needed, HVAC needed, appliance repair needed, welders needed, barbers. One thing about the hair care industry, it's a $547 billion industry. One thing about the hair care industry is for sure that we are the first pe people, you see us when you come in this world, and when you leave this world, you you need our services as well. We give you your first haircut, and we give you your last haircut. We give you your first hairdo, we give you your last hairdo. So it's very essential. It'll never go anywhere. It'll never go anywhere, right? So I have trades, and I have things available. Y'all don't know how hard it was for me to fight to stay in business. To employ, ask any one of my employees, very well taken care of. I make sure that they're taken care of before I'm taken care of. You know why? Because you have to help the people who help you. But we need strength to, to, to remain stronger. We need strength. Like, again, I could run, I'd be want to run away from all of this. I'd be want to take my little coins and, 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 or sell my businesses. I could sell my businesses for millions of dollars right now and be okay. But why sell my business? For millions of dollars 
and put it in the hands of somebody who don't properly care. I tell my employees, do not beat up on my students. Do not beat up on my students when they come up in that school. Because guess what? This is the opportunity that they have to change the trajectory of their lives. So guess what? If they got a weed problem, let's help them with the weed problem along the way. I'm not saying let them do whatever they want to do. I'm saying that they need somebody to mentor them along with us giving them this trade and skill. I tell my students all the time, I don't care about your money more than I care about you being successful, becoming taxpaying citizens, having good credit, knowing how to to establish your own corporation. Be good stewards. I'm not saying you got to be perfect. I can't talk about smoking and drinking. I ain't never did it. I chose not to do it. As an adult, I didn't want anything to interrupt my peace. That's why as a 50-year-old, I still can play basketball, football, baseball, softball. I'm healthy. I work out the whole nine yards. So, hey, that's my piece. I'm not judging you. But there's a time and a place for everything, for everything. If that's what you do, do it on your time. Don't feel like we can force what we do and who we are on somebody else because we're okay with it. You can't walk in a courtroom and do whatever you want to do. You can't walk in church and do whatever you want to do. You can't walk in the stores and do do whatever you want to do. I come from that school. My mama taught me I couldn't call my friend's house and ask to speak to my friend without t- saying to their mother or their father, hello, how you doing today? May I please talk to, you know, Joe? Or may I please talk to, no. We were taught how to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, good morning. How are you doing today? May I help you? Where's where's the, the etiquette? What people want to judge is because you, I don't care who you are, what kind of life you live, whatever. I don't care if you Buddhist, Catholic, Muslim. I love everybody. I love absolutely everybody. I think that there's a place for all, all of us, right? But all we have to do is be respectful. Be respectful. Work and earn a living and, and stop trying to get it so fast. If you get it too fast, then, hey, you're not going to be able to enjoy it. Work hard so that way you can understand the fruits of your labor. That's all we got to do, y'all. So, hey, y'all might know somebody who can help me. Y'all might know somebody who can help me to help us as a people. Y'all, like, like let, let us not be selfish. Let us not think about ourselves. If you guys want to donate to a great cause, I'm trying to build these buildings debt-free. I believe that I can. I'm trying to build these buildings debt-free. There may be a thousand people who can give a thousand dollars. I know it's a thousand people in my thread, in my on my social media, who can give a thousand dollars. Some people who can give five hundred dollars. Some people who can give a hundred dollars. I'm going preaching on you. Whatever that looks like, help me to help us. But we'll give. We'll we'll keep trimming the pockets of the billionaires. We'll keep trimming the pockets of the millionaires, and they don't care. They're on their boats and their yachts and their and they, they airplanes and living in their mansions and living far away from our people when I'm in the communities. I'm in the rough of it. I'm in the rough of it. Some people might only be able to give $50 or a dollar or $5, something. Just help me to be stronger to help our people. You don't do what I do. So help me with what I, I'm able to do in order to help our people so we can feel safer. So we can be safer out here in these streets. So we can be safer downtown. Who would ever thought that you can't walk downtown by Gucci and Neiman Marcus and Bloomingdale Building and and feel like, oh, okay, well, you know, since Evergreen Plaza and closed, they coming down there now. Who would ever thought that? You can't even feel safe. But we have to grab them. We can't just give them a gym and a basketball to play basketball. We can't. We can't just give them a computer. We can't just worry about high school diplomas and GEDs. That's important. But most people, a lot of people nowadays not going to college. They're not. Because they feel like what they going to college is not going to make them the money in this lifetime and what they want to make if you're not be, becoming a doctor or engineer or something powerful like that. So what do they need? They need trades. Poverty and crime work together. As long as there's poverty, there's going to be crime. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. As long as there is, is uh, mental incapacity and substance abuse, there's going to be crime. So we can't just give them a job. We can't just say, come on, we're going to pray for you, or we're going to do a march. Stop the violence. Stop the violence. 
after the march, after the praying, after the Stop the Violence rallies, then what? Then what are we going to do? Then what are we going to do? So I'm done because I got to go to work. I still work. I work very hard every day. I stress myself out every day worrying about our people and what we're going to do. So if you guys would like to donate, please be so be, be be you can safely donate. Go to www.datafoundationinc.org. www.datafoundationinc.org. And if you want to donate right away, you can donate dollars by Cash App, dollar sign data scholarships. Dollar sign data scholarships. I'm going to do this with or without the help of anybody. Why? Because I'm very, very passionate about what it is I do. I'm very passionate about our people and our people being okay. And not just our people, the world. I love everybody, every race, every color, every creed. But again, what did I say earlier? We got to make sure home is okay first. Make sure home is okay first. We give we give these foreigners from other countries all of this money to come over here to, to, to start businesses. We give them a tax break. And but but we don't help the, the people that's living in our communities. How does that even make sense? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. The churches are great. The church is where we come, we get our souls fed and all that kind of stuff, you know, even with the preachers. The churches can't survive if we don't give money to them. People think that it's going to the preacher, it's going to the preacher. No, that's not, the, that's not the case in every situation. When you go to a beautiful edifice, when you go to a church that's, that's structured and has discipline, what is that? That means that they're taking and they're doing what they're supposed to do. And they have the right to be able to live a good life as well, Period. Again, I don't need nobody donations in order to live good. I've worked hard enough in order to be able to live the life I live. That's period. That's it. That's all. That's it. That's all. I've made conscious, conscious decisions, and I've not been negligent. The more I've matured in order to make sure I can take care of my priorities and my obligations correctly. That's it. That's all. I need and I want help because of the fact that I want to be able to help our people stronger. I have all of the tools that, that, that there needs to be in order that there needs to be in order to help. So I appreciate you guys listening. I felt that in my spirit this morning. Thank you for everybody. Share this if you guys can. Share this to somebody else's page. You know, don't hesitate to donate. I don't care if it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. It's some millionaires that's listening right now. You can donate a million dollars. I'm a five hundred one C three. You can get a you can get a write off. But we are going to build these units because not only do we want to house them, we want to feed them. We want to make sure they have transportation. We want to make sure that their character is intact. Y'all know I say all the time, we have to be careful we don't allow our gift to take us someplace that our character can't handle. So we have to make sure all of these things in order so that way when we do give them these trades and when we do train them properly, that means that they can sustain. So now we don't have the people carjacking and busting people upside their heads or shooting and killing, and the jails wouldn't be as full as they are. Again, I've been to the jail right now. I'm in four penal institutions. Complimentary. I don't get paid to be there, y'all. I don't. So for those people who think that I do, I don't. I'm opening up a school in the in Florida penal institution. I don't get. I'm not getting paid to be there. North Carolina called me to open up a penal in a penal institution out there, a barber school. I don't get paid to be there. Everybody pull on me. They pull on me. They inbox me. They email me. I have a personal assistant who I, I have so many emails and so many inboxes that I, I have to speak at events. I have to do all of these things, and everybody want me to do it for free. And guess what? Because of my heart, I do the best that I can to make sure that I can oblige because I want our people to be helped. But I need help, too, y'all. I need help, too. Okay? So I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming on and listening. Again, if you want to donate, you can donate at datafoundationinc.org safely, or you can cash up and donate dollar sign data scholarships because we're definitely giving scholarships. We have a new trade school that's opening, so y'all check that out. Check out my page for all the information, but I love you guys, and I know 
that we are going to be our in city of Chicago. Hey, I'm here to be used properly and to help at any capacity I can possibly help because not only can I help with with the trades and with the with the schools, but I can help because I understand the demographics and I understand our communities and I'm in the communities, man. I'm in the communities. All right. I love y'all. Peace out. Y'all share this with somebody. Y'all have a great day.